Hello there, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Uduri Jagero, and this is Dialogues with Jagero, a place where we talk with uh, with great minds, hold bold conversations, and today we are holding a bold conversation about education. Now, when when we talk about education, education means a lot for me. And for me, if I did not go to school, the thing is that I would still be in the village. I sometimes think that if I had not come to Nairobi, I would be selling changa, or I would have died of the same. But education still confuses me because most of the things that I did in school, I am not sure. I'm going to have my guests, and I think they, are, they were nonsense, but maybe not. You know, uh, today I'm having... Uh, on set, uh, an educationist. Is that how we are going to go with this? Are you do you th think? I'm not. I'm, I'm not sure because uh, I've heard of educator, educationist, yeah. educationalists. Yeah, but I now I prefer <laughs> I prefer educator. <laughs> educator. Yeah, and that is uh, that is that is Clifford Olwoch. Mm. Um, he has been uh, a great guy in the in the community of uh, of, edu of educators and education. I, I am I am having this conversation with with Mr. Lloyd because I believe that this conversation needs to be not needs to be hard. And uh, one of the things why I am having uh, Mr. Lloyd is because I have been having a lot of interns at my company Comedia and at the organization where I run, which is called CMS Africa uh, Foundation. And there are so many things that I'm seeing that I think is not right. And my suspicion is that it's coming all the way from. Uh, how we are taught. Okay, so um, this is a conversation. Uh, Mr. Uh, so, Ma, welcome, Mr. Oloch. Thank you. Do you, do you much. prefer I call you Cliff or Dora? Yeah, Cliff. We just call it Cliff. Cliff is good, yeah? <laughs> Cliff is good. Cliff so, is so good. Cliff is, a, is, a, is an educator. The last time I went to your office, it was a huge office, you know? Okay. And I really, really loved it. I wish uh, wished that uh, when, I, when I become. Uh, <laughs> when I when I grow up, I'll have such a laborious office. The only time that I saw such a big office is the of the office of my uncle when he was the uh, the director of Kenya Railways, okay. the colonial office. Mm -hmm. It was the biggest office I've ever seen. Mm -hmm. Yours also cozy and very, a little bit more modern. Okay. You know, Thank so you. Uh, I wanted to talk with you about uh, education, but first of all, I wanted to. The people people to know about who you are okay as a person okay how you grew up how you ended up being a teacher mm -hmm. yeah good thank you for this conversation uh yes so Clifford Lodge that's my name I grew up in Eastlands Jericho estate to be precise and you were uh, born in Nairobi yes I'm a Nairobi uh, born and bred I'm second generation Nairobi was it first generation I think first generation second second no, first, first gener generation first Nairobi. generation yes that, what does that mean that means my I, I was born in Nairobi my parents were not oh yeah yes that's what it means yes that's what it means okay yeah so uh, my, I think Jericho Jericho was one of the one of the good uh, you know middle class estates before those those, those days <laughs> long 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 days long, that are long, long gone yeah, because now Buruburu came up and then it kept on changing, and uh, we ended up being the thugs. <laughs> yeah, yeah, of, of, yeah. Of, of, of Eastland. So, yeah. We, yeah, when I grew up, I mean, crime was rampant, and of course, we grew up in that kind of uh, setup. But I had a visionary father because mm. my dad was, uh, despite working in uh, what's that, what you call it, Nairobi City Council um, employee, his dream was very different. His dream was simple. Live in an estate, but don't go to school there. Mm. So we are all shipped to different schools. My sister went to Nairobi Academy, my brother to um, Hospital Hill, and then later on to St. Mary's. Uh, he was a year behind Kenyatta, but I wouldn't say. Yeah. <laughs> and then I was taken to You Stratton. are, yeah. No, he was my brother. He was, was yeah. I, was, yeah. I, I was taken to Stratton. Did, 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 they did, did they know each other? Did? I don't think so. With I think he was closer to Bruce Odiambo than to... They, 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 say that, they say that when people that the people that went to school with uh, with presidents or, yeah, you know, yeah. ambassadors and people like that yeah. were, became became, you know... Yeah. They became very close to power and not necessarily. I mean, because they're those who just now disappear into their own lifestyle, and that yeah. does not become their their choice. Yeah, because he 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 was more into sports, you know, kind of rugby and basketball and football. Mm -hmm. But I ended up at Strathmore School. So basically, what I'm trying to say is that my dad believed mm -hmm. in that. Is like uh, guys, mm -hmm. right? Uh, 
he did it not because he had money, but he had a vision. Yeah. Because he would just go in and ask for scholarships and bursaries, and he got them. And that's mm. how we schooled in Okan. So I, I became uh, what I, I mean, was, even even those days, he wasn't able to afford them. No, he wasn't able to afford them. They were quite expensive. Really? I mean, like I thought schools this uh, started being expensive no, after. No, no, I, that was a private school, and I remember like. The school fees of Strathmore in 1981, 82 was like uh, maybe two or three thousand shillings per term. I'm trying to convert that into that is that is that is that is a lot of money. 1982. Yes. I was not. It I is. was born in 1982. It is. If you, I think that that time that the pound was what well, was still a pound, isn't it? Yeah. It was 20 Kenya <laughs> So if you convert it, I mean, even at this particular rate. I think if I if I can say in terms of his salary, yeah, right, uh, that's he was getting maybe half of that per month, mm. you know, so maybe a thousand and something, yeah. So with three four kids, anyway, uh, we got basari, and that's how I ended up in that. So I grew up as as I would say a child of two worlds, mm. you know, kind of the affluent Strathmore, and then of course Eastlands, and that is what has actually shaped. Uh, me as a teacher because I'm able to see and both worlds. Yes, both both worlds. What what do you think was different in 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 either world? Mm -hmm. Because you say there was crime. Mm -hmm. Then uh, apart from the crime, yeah. What what was what else was different? Well, the, the, the social cohesion in Iceland is great. I mean, there's you cannot beat that. It's mm. a it's another village. You know, the way people grow up in the village and they know each other. Mm. I think Iceland was just like a copy paste of the village. You know, yeah. people grow up together. You know, and you know, like uh, there's no race. What do you call it? Tribal discrimination and whatever kind of thing. Mm. And uh, you just everyone is everyone's keeper or was I think that time. Yeah, I can't speak. <laughs> I can't speak for it at this time. But um, I've seen that in places where people grow up in proximity to each other. I've seen that in the slums because uh, work, I work a lot with those informal settlements. I've seen that mm -hmm. as in people are close and they know each other and they care for each other and they go. Uh, so I, I that I saw, you know, kind of. On the other hand, uh, on the other side, I saw a lot of individualism. I won't call it aloofness, yeah. but people kind of just minded their own business mm -hmm. and would meet and then it's like guys just disperse yeah. without. Uh, well, there's a way of keeping together, but it wasn't the same as Iceland. Mm -hmm. Yeah. In fact, I, I'll tell you a short story about this. A friend of mine who, when that time you were growing up, going to Carnival was the in thing. Yeah. And it was a 100 shillings to go in. 100, 100 shillings. Which, 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 which year are we talking in about? 1984. 1984. 100 bob in 1984. Before 9 o'clock, I think it was 50 bob. After mm. 9 o'clock, it was 100. It was an happy, a happy uh, hour. Yes. In the <laughs> so we were telling us this story of um, every Friday, they had to have not, not only a hundred, you must have at least 500 and above mm. because a hundred for you to go in, a mm. hundred for your girlfriend or girlfriends, yes, and then a few beers here and there, mm. you know, kind of right. So, every Friday, come Friday, they're planning how they're going to break the bank mm. and go to Carnival and impress the girls. Whereas, for us who came from Eastlands, we were planning our football games and tournaments and everything. Mm. So, when, when we came to school on Monday, everyone would have different stories. So we would marvel yeah. at these guys, how they stole their father's car and this and the impressive. And we were like, wow. Mm. And here we are, we're just talking about football and Goromai and yeah. and Abaluya football club. Yes. Much later when we met in life, the guy told me, oh, Cliff, let me tell you the truth. I really admired you guys. Mm. And I looked at him and says, be serious. Yeah. You admired us? Yeah. And then we thought you guys were the coolest guys. Mm. The guy told me that was a fake life. The, the, you, yeah. you guys, you guys were genuine, mm, organic. We were, yes, we were fake, and we had to keep it fake throughout. And through that fakeness, we were suffering mm. because you have to. What happens if you don't have money? You end up stealing. What happens mm. if you can't get a car? Mm. And then, in the in the absence of social media, mm. you have to plan it meticulously before that you meet at this time. Mm. So at eight thirty, if you're meeting mm. and you have not stolen your father's car. <laughs> You're in trouble. How do you tell those guys? So a number of times, guys would uh, not be able to get the car, and they would come, you know, just without the car. And then he's like, now you have to get a taxi. So you're the one who has to pay for the guys, and yeah. says it was a lot, of, a lot of stress. Yeah. Of course, uh, a number of accidents as well from the drink and drinking and driving. A couple of guys lost their lives. You know, so basically it was like, hey, 
this thing is a forced life. Mm. Yes. There is there is there is something that I, I would like you to explain to me. You know, when they that they say that uh, there are particular schools where when you go, you sort of I don't know whether to call it growing fast. Mm. I don't know whether to call it grasping life in a in a certain way. You see, for example, if you get if my if my daughter when when she goes to the village mm -hmm. and mingle with the others mm -hmm. and she speaks English mm -hmm. and Swahili mm -hmm. and the other ones in the village don't. Mm -hmm. And people think that my daughter is more intelligent, mm -hmm. but I don't think so. Mm -hmm. So, and, 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 and parents mm -hmm. want their kids to have that kind of life where mm -hmm. They're speaking the Queen's language and they are mm -hmm. they're a bit sophisticated and mm -hmm. and then they are very happy with the mm -hmm. with how the kid is is growing. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, this is this is my kid and she's a triara and she's at mm -hmm. she's they they, they are at, uh, at St. Mary's. Mm -hmm. What is going on there really as a teacher mm -hmm. and as, as an educator? Yeah. What is what is the difference between these two kids? I'm asking you that because then you are you are coming from the yeah. ghetto, yeah. but you are going to this school. Yeah. And so I the parallels how what what do you think is going is one becoming more intelligent than the other or what is what or this is just something we are seeing that is not mm. that is that is that that does not does not doesn't mean anything yeah the first is that uh, there's no there's none is superior to the other one yeah because uh, intelligence is going is, is something that is in it you know kind of that is i was explaining earlier mm. those multiple intelligences something that you you actually are born with them then you nurture them, mm. right? So uh, your your daughter's ability to speak English or Kiswahili will come under the literacy kind of literary intelligence, which anyone can have. And I mean, now 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 that the Ramogis have gone to the ground, and guys are coming out to speak their mother tongue. Yeah. So, so what's the difference? This is a journalist. Yeah. He can speak the Lu, you know, kind of. And yeah. one time your da your daughter will be like. I wish I could speak the Lu like that guy. Mm. Whereas many years earlier, that guy was like, I wish I could speak English and Kiswahili. You know, kind of. yeah. So basically, there's none has an advantage over the other. Mm. However, the core values, you know, kind of right, th those particular values and skills and all that, you know, things like resilience, you find that people from the village or people from uh, hardship areas yeah. will be more resilient. Mm. than the soft life people. Eh? <laughs> <laughs> soft life. The soft life. There's no, there's no Wi-Fi. The guys go, they throw a tantrum mm. and whatever kind of thing. And um, there's that inner drive, I will say, that um, people from marginalized areas have. And these other guys don't have. You know, mm. kind of right. Uh, if you look at it, even in KCSE or KCP, someone who gets a B, grade B in Garissa, and someone who gets a B in Nairobi, those two Bs are not the same. Yeah. <laughs> they are not the same. Yeah. That guy gets, you know, even a guy who gets 400 in KCP in Garissa, a guy who gets 400 in Nairobi, you'll say, hey, man. But right. in the eyes of the papers, it is the same. No, but when you're selecting, right, even you when you're interviewing, yeah. you love preference of that guy from Garissa. It's like this guy has something mm. that this guy does not have. Despite yeah. all the circumstances, this guy has managed to get this, this something. You know, kind of right. Mm. So the diff the biggest difference between those particular two two worlds, to me, has always been that staying power. You know, that resilience, that drive. That is something that, uh, unfortunately, I feel as if some of these soft schools they kill in the kids, mm. and that's why um, things like sports uh, being compulsory. You know, kind of right. Uh, let me say. Sports as a lesson and sports as competitive sports, right? If it is made compulsory, then from the word go, people start learning about competitiveness mm. in a positive manner. Mm. I normally say that nobody goes into the swimming pool or into the running track to be last. Even the fattest kid, sorry for the <laughs> for being <laughs> politically incorrect, <laughs> understand how this is the work community, you're not supposed to say fat. <laughs> <laughs> Even yeah, the, even yeah, yeah, it's called plus size. Yeah. <laughs> it's, called <No. laughs> it's called plus size, believe yeah, okay. <laughs> Even the plusest of the sizes <laughs> of the kids yeah. will never go into the track to lose. Mm. They go to win. They go to win. Yeah, so 
what the the system has actually robbed the kids of mm. is that all round you know kind of approach to education mm. so if you put kids in class or in a, in a in a room in a building for six to seven hours the whole day mm. and you're forcing them to learn in one one dimension mm. you know kind of there are those who will get it yeah 20 30 percent mm. ah the other 70 percent no they won't get it i know they won't get it so then we were talking about so then you finish uh, yeah, yeah yeah and then and then you dis, you you go to university i went to kenya science teachers college which is a different the one on gong road the one on gong road yeah i i really i used to admire that school a lot it's it's, it's be- actually it, it, it was built by the swedes yeah and uh, it's actually it was kind of that time the diploma colleges mm. were supposed to be like a uh, uh, like what medicine is what internship is to medicine mm. it's a specialized you're going to specialize only in education yeah right mm. and you just focus more on the implementation and the application aspect mm. rather than on the theoretical which bed uh, is very good at mm. yeah so later on of course they uh, when they start dismantling all this diploma education that is what now has brought down the quality of the why, why did they why did they and then and then right now i think it is nairobi university yes it's nairobi university why did they why do you think they decided to dismantle this 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 diploma of, uh, yeah the hype of the degree i think overtook everything and everyone was rushing for the degree paper the certificate but the government should know better about degrees and diplomas and what they mean rather than looking at the at the, the populace rushing to degrees the yes. government should be able to know better the, yes they should know better if they have the right people who are advising mm. uh, the should say the, the, the powers that be yeah uh, but at, uh, government being made up mainly of uh, politicians and political appointees mm. tend to go into into business to please their masters rather than to move the country forward mm. you know c- case in point against uh, contrary to this kind of was when Matiangi and uh, Magoha were put into neck and uh, Ministry of Education. I mean, these are guys who already their accolades surpassed, mm. you know, kind of those kind of things. Yeah. But they went there to clean a mess. Mm. Now that's that's now the government doing the right thing. Yeah. Going. Down. So when the diploma colleges are being phased out, and already the, because they had a beautiful structure that they could be satellite colleges for universities. It became almost automatic that. Um, Forgive my ignorance, but yeah. the government doesn't offer diploma courses anymore. They do, but I, I'm not sure in education. I mm. I think they're very very few, mm. because uh, Maseno was what Siriba, mm. Teachers College. Yeah, and then Kenya Science, of course, still Kenya Science. There was Kagumo. I'm not sure what Kagumo is now. Yeah, so I'm, I, I that that I have to feign. I mean, I have to be. Ignorant yeah, on, I don't, I'm mm-hmm. not sure about. I don't have it. Then, then you decided to be a teacher, right? That's yes. you decided to be a teacher after the diploma or before the diploma. Before, what happened was that after after my A levels, I had uh, a chance to study CPA accounts, mm. which now that time was a hot kick. Mm-hmm. Everyone was being uh, was doing CPA, CPA. <laughs> yeah, CPA, CPA. Rem- CPA. Yeah. But now, now that's why I come into the difference between schools and schools. Mm. because n- n- squ- nowadays a number of schools have got career guidance but at Strathmore we didn't have career guidance we had tutors and the tutor was now the guy who walks with you from the time you join the school to the time you leave the school kind of a one is that one. what a tutor means mentor let me call it yes that's what they were mm. this was now mentors yeah we call them tutors at that place mm. right but nowadays people call them mentors or coaches that is that is at the diploma level or? no this is Strathmore at the school Strathmore uh, at the school yeah before now I joined the college that is that is interesting that each and every person had a mentor yes has has had has, still it's in today even today oh yes you have a mentor who works with you they call them a tutor it's actually a lot to do also with uh, your spiritual well-being you mm. know kind of they want to know you know what kind of a human being you're growing into mm. So at that time my mentor uh, called Santi and of course when I told him I'd applied for accounts and everything mm. and he had worked with me that journey. Yeah. And we had gone to a number of uh, camps, you know, kind of whereby we would take care of the younger kids and all that. He told me Cliff, let me tell you the truth, you know you, mm. you're a born teacher. Yeah. You're a born teacher, you know, you're natural with kids, you're natural with people, right? You should go into a profession 
where you deal with kids and which other one apart from teaching then he gave me that famous quote that i've never forgotten up to now mm. is that uh, if you want to be rich go into accountancy <laughs> if you want to be happy go into teaching go into teaching yeah so at that point then uh, when kenya science had applied he's the one personally brought me the, the advertisement and told me mm. apply for this go mm. for this and that's how i ended up into teaching uh-huh. so uh-huh. i had i had the traits before but even all along even when i was in college and we had this peer teaching and and guys kept on telling me my cliff you're a natural you're a natural you know kind of but i i didn't see it myself because when you're a natural you're a natural you do what <laughs> what mm. you do naturally yeah so that's how i ended up but very interestingly is that i studied maths and physics but now i'm teaching creative writing so teach ask me how <laughs> wow <laughs> You're enjoying it. You told me that you are happy and young. Oh, yes, I'm loving it. <laughs> you're loving it. It it's very yeah, very so, interesting. So I'm not even teaching my maths and physics anymore. You you're teaching creative writing. I'm teaching creative writing. Uh and then you uh, you have the, you have gone to different schools. How Yes. Which is this can you tell me about this school? Yes, so uh after college I was posted to Ramba which is in Dori. Mm. I just lasted like 2 3 months. Uh, even before those guys they still owe me my salary they have not paid me my first salary yeah it was 2311 shillings mm. in, in 19- mine was 900 <laughs> in 1990 that was a long time ago <laughs> <laughs> 2311 uh, and they t- it took them three months to process yeah. and before that process had already left so i went back to strathmore to i mean my alma mater and uh, that's where i was for the next nine years But you're here, teaching there. Yes, I taught there at the primary section. I was, mm-hmm. a, I was ahead of primary. Yeah. But here comes the twist. Mm. Progressively uh you know like the 844 system they were how competitive it is mm. and you want to be on top of the game and that kind of thing. But I'm be- I'm a bit of a free spirited person. I'm very artsy. And it was bothering me, you know, kind of that you know just just pushing kids and pushing kids and pushing kids. Mm. Then one day I stumbled across um a certain parent whose son was in Banda mm-hmm. and he walked into Strathmore and he told the head teacher of Strathmore listen uh, I w- I'm looking for a tutor personal tutor for my son who's in Banda they're doing a different system and I want him to have a feel of how aggressive it for for his so the head teacher says cliff go and help this kid mm. and it actually be- became the turning point instead of me helping the kid the kind of homework that they were doing and i said this is what i want to do this is interesting it was more project based more inquiry based mm. more conversation discussion here i am helping him to present his project to the class and every okay that those days there was no powerpoint eh? so <laughs> mm. so this guy is presenting his points and now he's going mm. to talk and he's presenting to me and i'm supposed to listen to him mm. and critique and it was still a presentation exactly and listen to mm. him and give him feedback powerpoint presentation and i'm like <laughs> <laughs> it was very powerful very powerful and i'm like yeah and this, this boy is in grade 6 huh eh? mm. the standard 6 boy mm. and i'm like wow you mean in the same country we have got these parallels right yeah this is a different system from the other one so uh, it, it helped me look at things differently and now i started even teaching differently to my ed for four students yeah. but i had that longing to join that system so i spent nine years at strathmore then i left in 1999 to join uh, a Khan academy that time it was offering igcse but later turned to ib and then uh, what is ib uh, international baccalaureate is like another education system mm. right then i moved from aga khan and i went to oshola academy mm. there i stayed long mm. for 12 years 12 years yes. i remember you when you came to when you came for my launch the launch of my book you were at oshola yeah, i was at oshola mm. yeah then from oshola uh, i was there as a deputy for 12 mm. years mm. then i moved to premier as head of the primary section Then after 22 years uh an opportunity came knocking and one day a friend of mine called and said Cliff there's a school that is looking for a principal mm. but it's a local curriculum school are you interested yeah and i said i that's the challenge i've been looking for because I, i'm just i've kind of stagnated in this international system so mm. i need to go back to the local curriculum and internationalize it and mm. that's what the school actually was uh, uh geared towards mm. 
And that's how I ended up at Reggie School. Oh, beautiful. What, yeah. a, what, a, what a wonderful journey. Now, yes. there, is, there is this lady that has written a book. I don't remember her name, but I know, I know I, I've read a little bit about her. Mm. I think her name is, let me just check. I think her name is Kalina. Yes, her name is Kalina. Mm-hmm. Kalina says something very interesting about education mm. and our education today. And that is, that is pre- pretty much the, uh, the meat of our discussion. Mm-hmm. And um, <clears throat> she's, she, she poses the question, what's wrong with school? Uh, what does it always, why does it always seem stra- uh, staggeringly inefficient? In, mm-hmm. inefficient mm-hmm. Such a stunning waste of time and resources. No matter how good the teachers, how dedicated the staff, or how well constructed the curriculum, mainstream education just can't work well in this day and age. Even for the academic subjects, it is designed to teach. Traditional school will always fall short. Mm -hmm. Okay? And then she says that something that I really dislike about this kind of school is that homework, Mm -hmm. it is simply insane. Mm -hmm. You know, while there are jobs uh, out there that require this kind of time-intensive labor, and even those that don't pay you overtime for the for your dedication, this space this space is setting them up for unhealthy work environment mm-hmm. for for kids. Mm-hmm. They will either uh, they will either enter adulthood thinking these excessive expectations are normal and acceptable. Mm-hmm. Never in any of our jobs uh, have Aaron talking about somebody ever worked a full day in an office. Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, on average, kids are doing more than three hours of homework each night mm-hmm. by the time they reach high school. Mm-hmm. Uh, this is on top of the full day of assignment, tests, lectures they are required to have in class. Mm-hmm. This space is setting them up for unhealthy work environment and puts them mm-hmm. uh, in line for excessive and unhealthy choices and expectations. Mm-hmm. So, the other day, mm-hmm. my, my daughter came from school at at three, mm. uh, three three thirty there about, mm. and my 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 house metron uh, the the house help mm. is chasing around to do a homework mm. by around four, and uh, I was in the sitting room watching TV and I said, this girl has just come from school, mm. what is the hurry? Mm. Can she just play mm. and then uh, by seven or seven 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 she can sit down and do the homework mm. and then sleep by eight. What is the hurry that she's from school and she has to go back to school again mm. immediately? And she was telling me that it's the mother that has told her that she has to do that. Mm. And, and, I, and I felt that it is very problematic. And one of the things I've realized is that uh, this kind of people, when it is school, school, school all the time, mm. and then no wonder people don't even want to read after, after leaving school because... It has been too much for them. Mm-hmm. I don't know, uh, and this is this is compute. Uh, uh, what is it called? CBC, mm-hmm. competency based curriculum, curriculum yeah. that is that is doing this to them. Mm-hmm. So I'm just thinking, what is what what is what is this idea that kids have to wake up at f- at four, mm-hmm. and then be in a bus mm-hmm. at five, mm-hmm. and travel to school until seven in the jam, mm-hmm. and then stay there the whole time. Mm-hmm. And then probably leave school because I am I, I live along one year road, mm. and at seven seven thirty I see young girls, young boys, with big bags on their backs, seven. you know, trudging the trudging, uh, yeah, <laughs> going back home. And when I come out, oh, yeah, in the evening, yeah. going somewhere at five, you mm, see them, yeah. you know. So I, I don't understand why. What is what is your <laughs> what is your outlook on 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 this on this uh, on, on this on this on this you know this yeah. this kind of arrangement? Okay. Um, allow me to make a crude summary. Yeah. This is a missionary position of education. Yeah. yeah it's a default. It's a default. The missionary, you mean the, the, the missionary sex? <laughs> <laughs> the a, boring one that people don't, don't, don't like anymore. This is a default. It's a default. You know, it's a default setting for all education systems. Right. Uh, sit in classroom, teach, give homework, you know, kind of, it's a default. There's no, uh, should I say what, um, innovation, there's no, and, you know, kind of, uh, should there's different ways of doing it. And if you have a very innovative education system like the Montessori, right, it does not produce results. So the world has become so result-oriented 
and then throw in the mix of the result orientedness mm. the mix of cartels mm. and these cartels what do they want they want money so you have publishers you know kind of cartels yeah right so right now um i think the junior secondary grade seven, they've got like 18 learning areas which have been squeezed to 14 subjects you know kind of which is more than what that is that is that is which one junior secondary cbc cbc yeah so cbc there is the two years preschool yes there's and two. then and then there is the three years yes for lower yes and then three yes. again yeah. for upper then there is the then there is two and then three no three three three, three and three seven eight nine 10, 11, 12, so it's three, three. Mm. Yeah. Go ahead. So the number of textbooks is double what it was before. Oh, Why? Yeah? Why? Because now workbooks have come in. And workbooks is, is, is a mind gold for the publisher because the kids write in it. And the kids write in it? Yeah, it's a workbook. It's a workbook and also a textbook? No, there's a textbook and there's a workbook. They're two separate things. So when you talk about publishers, do you mean book printers? So that's that, that's a gold mine because now before there was only the textbook right yeah. that we had to print mm -hmm. now we are printing that we are printing the textbook and I'm printing a workbook so this textbook can be what's the word can be passed on to the next person the workbook cannot the workbook cannot because I write in it I write in the workbook I write it inside it but let me get it very clearly about yeah. the workbook yeah you know, in Bible study, yeah. you're given a book to, they're, they're, you, you're given something on top, yeah, yeah. and then you're supposed to write. Yes. Is it the same thing? It's the same or thing. Or this is just a, it's just a, what, what do we call these books for writing? Which one? Like this. Like This is an exercise book. Yes, yes. No, no, it's no, no, not. No, 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 no. You, you have an exercise book, separate. Mm -hmm. You have a textbook, and you have a workbook. Have I have I bought this thing? Because my wife usually Which I send my wife to buy no, this there, thing. There. It's, uh, it's you, in good one. Yeah, I must have bought it. Yeah, it's the same thing now. Anyway, so, um, and by the way, the workbook is a brilliant. It's a brilliant way to go. Mm -hmm. But you cannot have a workbook in all the subjects. You know, kind of just mm -hmm. doesn't make sense. So, um, that is one cartel, completely. Yeah, and there's no way they're going to relent. The more textbooks they print and publish, the better it is for their business. Okay. At what point? At what point, Mualimu, does this thing become a cartel? Because yeah. I am following it up. Mm -hmm. You know, I have, uh, I have, I have something here on my computer. Mm -hmm. um, I have something here on my computer, and it is called. Uh, it's called uh, the the case K K I C D, oh, right? K I C D. Yes. Come yes. On. KICD, uh, it's is the is the is the design. Yes, that's the, the framework design. Yes, the framework design. Yeah. But then the, the where the where so cartels come even before this is designed. So the KICD, we is uh, that's a roadmap. Mm. You know, kind of right. Mm -hmm. So a roadmap from here to Kisumu. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now you can decide to walk. Right. Mm. You can decide to take a train. You can decide mm. to take a bicycle. You can decide to take whatever. If you decide to drive, you can decide to take a Toyota. You can decide to take a Mercedes. It's up to you what your ability is. Mm. So if a school decides that it's buying all the textbooks, right, and telling the parents to buy all the workbooks, it's a school to decide. Right. So th the design is a roadmap. How you implement the design, that's where the publishers come in, the how bit of it. The design tells you the what to do not the how to do it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And eventually the teacher combines, you know, kind of what you've been told, how to do it, and then now the implementation bit of it. And that is where we go wrong because uh, that kind of, should I say, transition from the 844 to the CBC is not complete. It's still a process. Mm. Yes. And it might take longer. In fact, in my general, uh, what, what do you call it? Um should I say, summary of the whole thing and judgment of the whole thing. Mm. I normally say that until your daughter's generation go through CBC and come back to teach CBC, the CBC way, right? What we will have is 844, sorry, CBC being taught the 844 way completely. Mm. Yes. Mm. And that is what is happening. Yeah. And that is why the grade six exam, the KIPSI exam, um, uh, what do you call it, has become another KCPE. Mm. Yeah. 
their past papers. You have those uh, encyclopedias and everything, huge things that have been produced. And then there are papers all over and revision and this kind of... We've just brought down KCP to, uh, to a lower level. Yeah. So until that overhaul is complete, you know, then we can say CBC has taken now a natural course. Mm. Yeah. And that is why um, schools like Regis, where I work, were actually set up to kind of make the local curriculum internationalize mm. in a way that without or with CBC or no CBC, is, is there a way we can teach through projects? Is there a way we can teach through inquiry-based? Is there a way we can teach all the disciplines, you know, kind of sports, art, uh, music, dance, you know, kind of all those things? Is there a way we can teach them? In fact, the other day I was having a discussion with uh, some of my teachers, and I think the biggest paradox in this country has been that every, t every year we have had a drama festival, right? But we've never taught drama in the curriculum. Never. Yeah. We have music, right? And we don't teach music in the curriculum unless it is a specialized, a few schools are specialized here and there. Yeah. We have sports games, right? Every year we have sports games. And you know, kind of we have national sports games, but sports is not taught. That to me is the biggest paradox. How can you compete implementation bit of it without the teaching bit of it? Mm. In all schools, the sports lessons are taken by the maths teachers. Mm. But the school team will meet at the end and they'll train. And sometimes they'll hire uh, professional coaches to train them. So that doesn't make sense that you guys, you understand the power of sports, what it means to the school. Of course, it is used a lot to market the schools <laughs> rather than to market the students themselves, mm. right? But when it comes to the lesson, we're mm. not going to have this, this thing. Let us do some more maths. That I have never understood. Mm. Yeah, And that is why we are at... And that is why at 5 a.m., uh, in fact, the other day I saw Ted Malanda had posted on social media that Eugene and Mifikakwa village of <laughs> the school bus coming at 5 a.m., Mm. to pick guys in the village. Yes, <laughs> yes. You know, kind of. But the parents are happy. The parents are happy. Why? Let me go back. We're still stuck to the industrialization era. Yeah. You know, kind of, right? Factories. Factories. You know, mm. We're stuck there. Mm. And it's a shame because now what you just read, we're in the digital era. Yeah. But th there's just total disconnect between digitalization, right? Mm. Yeah. In fact, I remember when I just joined uh, Regis and th there's some students who came to me to say that some teachers had confiscated their pack of cards. They, they brought cards to play, and then the teachers had confiscated. You know, kind of, so can I help them to get them back? So when I asked the teacher, the teacher said, yeah, why are they bringing cards to school? They should be studying. <laughs> and I'm like, do you know the thinking that goes behind playing cards? Mm. <laughs> the intelligence. Yes. It's like playing chess. Yes. Yes, exactly. Yes, I'm trying to predict your move. Yes. And whatever kind of thing. Yes. Right? Anyway, so I didn't lecture the teacher, but what we did is that we introduced uh, something called a gifted pack. Mm. Gifted pack is like an alternative way of, of uh, rewarding kids who finish their work mm. early in class instead of punishing them mm. by giving them more work. Yeah. So uh, just a series of puzzles, packs, the whatever, scrabble, board games, including cards. All of a sudden, there's an explosion of kids playing cards. Mm. You know, kind of I could see the excitement and it's like, now the teachers were like, okay. Mm. We are <laughs> I want to tell you a story. Yes. My nephew mm. uh, is loves coding. Mm -hmm. uh, he is right now in form three. Mm -hmm. So the other day, my my sister brought him a very cool laptop mm -hmm. from Norway. And uh, you know, I was so naive. Mm. So I told him, so why are you going to keep this in school? Mm. And he said, what? Mm. I can't go to school with this laptop. It is not allowed. So that is number mm. one. Mm. I bought him a phone. Mm. Actually, I thought he had been going to school with a phone. Mm. So I went to visit the sister, mm. my, sis my, my, my sister's daughter. He goes to when they when they close school, and my sister had mm. the phone. Mm. 
somewhere around the house and mm-hmm. say, this is Obunga's phone. I bought this phone, Obunga. He's not going to school with it. He's not going to school with it. Mm-hmm. So I, Obunga was like, I cannot, I would have loved to keep coding mm-hmm. in school. Mm-hmm. But I can't go to school mm-hmm. with this laptop. Mm-hmm. He cannot go to school with this phone. Mm-hmm. So I had a very heated exchange with with the Mwalimu in the village. Mm-hmm. And I because I was having this story with him and he was telling me that this boy is going to be watching porn with his with mm-hmm. his thing. Mm-hmm. He is going to do all sorts of things. Mm-hmm. And I was telling this teacher, you know what? Mm-hmm. You only need to give me this phone mm-hmm. for one hour and this phone will never access any porn site. Mm-hmm. The firewall and all that, yes. You know. Mm-hmm. So when you talk about the errors mm. you know the, the how we used to be mm. talking about factories and we to for example right now i want to ask you the question mm. do you it is it against the government law that kids cannot go with laptop to school or phones mm. to school mm. Wh- which law is it is it made at school what what okay. is going on okay um ignorantly i'll say i don't know but <laughs> yeah right <laughs> mm. I'll, 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 I'll answer it in a different way mm. When uh, when I went through schooling, mm. we were not allowed to use calculators in the in the exams. From yes. four, A levels we were allowed because I'm the old generation. So, mm. when, but from four we were not allowed, and he, this was the reasoning then that um, uh, calculators are expensive, so not everyone can afford a calculator. Yeah. That 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 was the reasoning then. Because but that's it, a very interesting reasoning. Exactly. I thought I thought the reasoning would be like mm. do it manually. Yeah, no. So we did maths manually and everything. Yeah. But initially, calculators were expensive, just like the fast phones. Yeah, they were very. Yeah. But yeah. progressively, they became cheaper, right? Yes. And even a, a, a book became as chi- as cheap as <laughs> I mean, uh, um, cheaper than uh, sorry, a calculator became cheaper than books. Yes. And now they're allowed. Mm. Okay. They are? Yes, now they're allowed. From four O level exams, they're allowed to use calculators, including scientific calculators. Because a scientific calculator will go for maybe twelve hundred or twelve fifty. Mm. And, and the other one? Seven fifty, you know, kind of and books that, that's that's a rate that books go for. Right? So mm. it's like instead of asking guys to buy books worth thirteen thousand shillings and you're telling them they cannot use so, so someone up there had that uh switch or that moment aha moment of da nah, the whole world is using calculators and that kind of thing right now that's what you're coming to phones and you're coming to laptops mm. right is yes they're expensive but if you look at the the amount of money used on textbooks between from 1 and from 4 mm-hmm. if all those books can be just put online and on soft it's worth as much as is there that is the trail of thought that you had and you la- you lo- you lost it yes. remember you are trying you are telling me about cartels yes and you lost that train of thought and you never went back to yes. it yes so now <laughs> so so coming back because yes. even with um even with the textbooks they realized that okay now uh, we, we have to be smart because the day there'll be a revolution and you get uh, a president or you get a minister who is actually different in thinking and it says okay fine like those guys who came and said a uh, laptop or whatever if that thing had worked right we'll be talking a different story now we'll be talking a totally different story and these cartels would realize that now guys we need to sell our soft not our hard copies they had the era of hard copies so they, they, they will be there to prolong it as much as possible right the the, the, the printed version and ensure that uh, whoever comes with this it doesn't work or bring it down and whatever kind of thing. Now, unfortunately, the teachers are at the center of this all because they mentally they're not shifted to to the digital era. Mm. I mean, I've had yeah, I've had yeah. I've had hilarious stories of schools that have uh, some, what do you call it? projectors and uh, soft uh, what do you call it? this the board the whatever they call it the, that board the the whiteboard. They not the whiteboard. There's a word the smart board the smart board yes yeah, the smart board yes. you know kind of right yeah the school that have those things but the teachers will go and plug in the laptop and project notes and ask students to copy notes from the smart board to the books i mean how and smart can you speak <laughs> <laughs> it's a smart board <laughs> <Not> a, <laughs> it's a smart board it's a smart board you know mm. kind of, but, but this teacher is wired 
that the only way guys can learn is by copying notes. So they're copying notes, but they have textbooks that have notes, mm. right? And some of them can access laptops where they can actually. So instead of you using that particular session, you know, kind of in t- in to to teach and to get guys to give you their ideas and their feedback and the guys to interact with each other and uh, debate on certain issues and give them different scenarios and whatever kind of thing. What are you doing? Let them copy notes. Let them copy notes. So the those cartels will be very happy if that teacher does not move on to the next level. Mm. Kind of, but for how long? That's my question. For how long are we going to say that? Uh, listen, and you can see the guys who are digitally like uh, literate, like you are. You can see the difference. Yeah, you know, kind of the huge. And mm. sometimes you look at your daughter and it's like, okay. And then an- another interesting thing that is coming up also is quite a number of kids who have uh, special learning difficulties. Mm. But the moment they're given a laptop, right? And sometimes yeah. Google, you know, kind of, and they use a voice. A version of Google and the, the, the mode of Google, the guys come, they come alive, mm. right? Because their way of learning is different. Mm. It's totally different. It's not our way of learning of sitting and listening, sitting and listening and mm. doing homework and this. No, theirs is different, completely. Yeah. But we have not. That switch has not come. I was with my. I took mm. my daughter to the hospital this morning, mm. and the 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 game she was playing on on the tablet. I can't play that game. I could see how complicated that game was. Mm. But she was playing with such ease. Mm. I think it's a game of uh, you are given you are given a you've given a blank canvas mm. and then they give you a picture on the side. Mm-hmm. And then there is another so they they sort of split the screen. Mm-hmm. And then they give you a picture here yeah. and they give you everything to work with up here. Mm. So your job is to actually make this picture using moving objects on this other side. Mm. And so this, uh, what she was doing was a, it was some sort of a very, uh, I don't know, it was a village in 19, I don't know, 18 something. Okay. Yeah, so she just picks and makes, picks and makes. And we were driving from my home, which is from my, from my house, which, apartment, which is uh, along Wanye Road. Mm. We were coming to, 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 the, to the greenhouse. Mm. And by the time we were arriving, mm. she had already made that thing. Okay. You know, so I for me, I just kept glancing at it as mm-hmm. as she was making it. Yeah, yeah. I, I don't know who taught her that. I don't know. I think my, the mom that downloaded that game, but whoever taught her that game, I don't. And and it was just it was just amazing. So now my you see for me the my thinking yeah is not even your daughter playing the game mm. is the brains behind that game. Mm-hmm. The guys were thinking that this is what. The, the digital era kids mm. need, mm. you know, kind of, these are the what, now if, um, just for example, if it was your village mm. and your child is learning social studies, uh, for, you know, kind of about your village and the roads in your village and mm. the marketplaces and blah, 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 you know, kind of, instead of a textbook, you know, Kisumu is three kilometers from, I don't know where, where, where you know, kind of, so the brains behind that now that's the next. That's what I'm saying. When your daughter now becomes uh, a teacher or a professional, mm. that generation, mm. right? Maybe there'll be something different with the, <laughs> with the kids at that particular time. But they will understand better that you know, kind of right, mm. that education is not anymore about grades alone. Mm. No, it's yeah. about skills. It's about ability. Mm. It's about your you know, kind of your ability to learn and learn, change. You know, kind of adapt you know i mean look, look at what happened to nokia yeah look at what happened to kodak mm-hmm. you know you you blink you're gone you blink you're gone <laughs> you blink you're, you're gone airtel yeah. yes uh, yeah and within a short time it's like education will be the same mm. it's like the guys who a time will come is like you realize okay gone is a print completely nobody gone needs is it. a print completely yeah gone is a print you know someone can just come up the machine mm. that has everything and yeah. costs less than all the textbooks in the world mm. Malimu, 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 uh, parents are very, I think parents are very confused about how to go about educating their children. Yeah. Uh, choosing a school. Mm-hmm. There are people, a friend of mine, he used to be my, my neighbor where I live now. He's no longer there, he left. 
And one of the things that he told me when we were driving in in his car, one of this uh, one day is that, you know, I don't understand why I'm taking my child to St. Anna's. Mm -hmm. You know, because it's taking a, a huge toll on my finances. Mm -hmm. Like sometimes I just feel like I am I am working for this kid that is not even that is not even 10 years. Mm -hmm. And all my all my money is just going towards this kid. Mm -hmm. You know, and and so I was joking with him. Mm -hmm. We were just we just going towards St. Hannah. Mm -hmm. We were not we past the junction. Mm -hmm. There is that roundabout mm -hmm. that goes to a public school on your on your right into Jamhuri. There is a yeah. public school there. Yes. You know? And I was telling him, why don't you just take them there? Mm -hmm. This child. Why don't you take the, the child to school there? Yeah. And you know, and she, he was telling me that, you know, my wife <laughs> you know, she just won St. Anna's and this, yeah, yeah, yeah. I think by that time it was about 90,000 per, yeah. per semester or something. Per term and all that. Yeah, per term or something yeah. like that. Yeah. So what 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 did you tell? Because for me, I have always had this, this conversation with myself. Mm. That what is it that is in a, at St. Mary's, at Riara? Mm. What is it that they are doing there mm. that I should be able to at least try and replicate at home? Mm. So that although I am not able to afford Riara or St. Mary's or, or Regis, you call it, right? Mm. So this is this is you being honest to parents. Mm. Because there are parents that cannot afford where you teach. Yeah. There are parents that can only afford where they can, where the public schools that is yeah. dusty and all those things. Yeah. What what if 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 you have a parent that is that is mm. that is not able to afford mm. the schools, you know, a school with an international outlook. <laughs> <laughs> what what would you tell this 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 parent? What 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 are they supposed to be doing? Okay, yeah, it's a good question. Mm. My personal philosophy mm. is that I've always said there's no good or bad schools. Mm. There are only good and bad teachers, right? Mm. So anywhere you go, you get good and bad teachers. In the public sector, you'll get them. In the private sector, you'll get them. You know, kind of right. So the thing of the school is not really an issue. It's a lifestyle that the parents choose for themselves. And even that Riara and Regis and Makini and that kind of thing, there are some parents who would, they would better be caught dead than take their kids there. So they'll take them to, to, to the Brookers and to the Brabans and to the everything. It's a class thing, right? Having said that, uh, the government has a lot to play in this. In... Uh, the way the public schools have deteriorated in terms of infrastructure. To the extent that there's some schools where you'll find that uh, water in the toilet is an issue, uh, tissue, uh, there's no electricity, you know, kind of the same kind of infra infrastructure that we went through in the 70s are the same now. So in the 70s, they were good because they were barely 10 years old. So they were still very new. But we realize that the maintenance has not been kept. And it's like, okay, fine. Why would I take my child to a place where hygiene is an issue? You know, kind of. It's no longer about the grades and grades. It's about all round. So when now you have a little bit more money and you can afford uh, those schools, you want something better for your kids. Unfortunately, parents have taken that better is more expensive. Had the government, just like in Rwanda, you know, kind of maintained the public schools, to the extent that there's no difference between a public school and a private school. that Your friend would not have that choice, right? Uh, now, again, with the, with, with the teachers, when the public mentality, uh, civil servant mentality comes in, you know, kind of where the kids, they're going to be caned and they're going to be punished inhumanly and everything, despite what the government has said. During our time, there was no Children's Act that stopped the teachers from caning us, but now there is. My 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 yeah. niece told me that they're being caned thoroughly. You're, at yeah, you're caned thoroughly. You know, there's uh, and it's against the law. It was never it, against, is. it was never against the law, right? But now it is against the law. You know, kind of right. So for you, you say, okay, fine. These guys are breaking the law because you're not the one who has made that law. You're not the one who has said, don't cane my child. It's the government that has said, right? So why are they caning the? So you you have second thoughts. So let me take my child to the Riara and to the Santanas and everything whereby the, the, the administration knows very well that if a teacher touches a child, the teacher loses a job. The teachers also know. If I touch a child, I lose, I lose my job. So whether it is fear or whatever, it's up to them, right? <laughs> yeah. so, not, so you 
you are more adept to take your child to those places, right? And then we have a different set of parents and we're getting different sets of parents. <laughs> they walk. These guys, they, they know their rights. Mm-hmm. They know what they want for their children. They know what is good for their children and everything. The thing of the mental health issues are coming up, the emotional aspect, it's coming up more and more often. It's like, I, I want to take my child to a place whereby all the talents, right, can be discovered, mm-hmm. can be nurtured, mm-hmm. right? You're getting more, more and more parents in startups, in... Uh, in, in arts, you know, kind of. So they, they want things differently, mm. completely. Not the same way our parents want is like, oh, you're going to be an engineer. Yesterday we had, um, we, okay, I'll call it a career day. We yeah. had a career day. Um, so it on Facebook. Yeah, by Action, Action Aid and whatever. And we had a couple of kids who came dressed as YouTubers. Mm. And there's a parent who was telling us, eh, YouTuber ni nini. <laughs> yeah. So you have an eight-year-old who says, I want to be a YouTuber. When I grew up, you know, kind mm. of. So it came, came with, uh, and, uh, and. Uh, uh, but Mwalimu, Mwalimu, <laughs> Mwalimu, Mwalimu, something, a question yeah. has, to be, has to be asked and answered perhaps. Yes. In that, in that regard. Like, for example, we know kids in England. I, by the way, do you know if, if these kids that are in soccer academies also go to school? Mm-hmm. I don't know. Do they do? They do. They do. They do. I mean, you know. So, so, so in, so in Kenya, you have brought this up, and yeah. if somebody is saying that they want to be a YouTuber and they are yeah. eight years old, yes. what is the? How do they? How do? They, how do you begin to? How do you begin to 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 teach this child in a way that he is going to be a YouTuber? So there are three ways. Yeah. Okay. Number one, of course, is to have uh, clubs that address those issues, mm. right? Whether it's uh, once a week weekdays, Saturday, whatever, so that the interest is nurtured. It's just like a DJ, you know, kind of, right? Mm. right? We have a number of kids who have shown interest in DJ skills, so we use them in our technical uh, assemblies. They're the ones who will set up the everything, right? So they already they, they have got that technical acumen to do that. So, th- so that's number one. Number two is uh, to just to link them up with a real YouTuber. Mm. So both either the YouTuber coming to give a talk or them going to come and see over here also Jagger is a YouTuber. So mm. what, does, what does he do? Mm. And the guy just sits over here and combs his beard. Mm. <laughs> <Doesn't> do <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, content. Content. Actually, last week we had a similar situation when uh, there was a Twitter post by Terry Anchebet about some of our kids uh, throwing trash out of uh, out of the vehicle. Mm. And uh, I, I went to the assembly and I talked to the kids about it and told them, listen, we're talking about now digital citizenship. We're talking about uh, influencers. We're talking about n- no longer the traditional newspaper, mm. social media and everything. I explain to them how this thing becomes viral very fast. Mm. I have to realize. Mm. Right? And the last one is uh, just like you're doing with the interns. For us at Regis, we have uh, job shadowing, which normally is from threes and from fours. They spend a whole week right, at a place of their choice. They're the ones who choose. So if someone wants to be a YouTuber, we look for the YouTuber. We look for them. You'll spend a whole week over there interning or not interning. I say uh, job shadowing, shadowing that person. Mm. You know, kind of seeing what they do and what they are, getting. So it's, you want to really look to get this, 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 this uh, the term, right? Which one? Yeah, that one. <laughs> job shadowing. Job, no, job shadowing is yes. It's that's a, that's a term we use. Mm. Yes, because it's not mentorship. Is it? Is it? Is it? Is it? Is it? And it's not internship. Is it widely a widely used term? We use it. Mm. Yes. And that's why I'm saying you are really hard to look at. Yes, to look for that one. It's not internship. It's not. It yes. can't be internship. Because you're not. You're not. You're not qualified. Yes. You know, kind of right. Mm. And it's not mentorship because mm. it's, it's a one-off. Mm. Right. So it's just. What does it? What What does it? What does it? What does it meant to? What is? Is it meant to achieve? Okay. Let, let me see, put it this way: If mm. uh, a day at work, if I told your daughter, a day at work of your parents, go mm. and spend one day with your parents at work. And see what they do, right? So mm-hmm. she would be here, seated, checking what you do and everything, and blah 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 blah. The whole day, and maybe another day she spends at the mother's, and whatever kind of thing. So that is supposed to plant a seed into the child of a understanding what my parents do, and where where, where my school fees comes from. So this guy, no wonder this guy is ever broke, man. Yeah. <laughs> this only does just talk, talk, talk. <laughs> Talk, 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 talk. <laughs> but yeah, uh, the, the the main aim of the job shadowing. We've had a number of people who think that they want to be doctors mm-hmm. until they see blood, yeah, and they run away. 
and that is the end of their dream with medicine. Yeah. We had a very interesting very interesting case of um, hospitality. And this group of students thought that hospitality when the check means it's different from entrepreneurship. Mm -hmm. So they thought that hospitality is actually owning a hotel. Mm -hmm. When you took them out for the hospitality industry, so let a dika vitanda. They said to hell. Yeah, but I use you. You you so you, 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 meant, you meant entrepreneurship is different. Mm. That's what they meant. But when you gave them the list, ah, oh, hospitality hotel, oh, what you, they ticked. They ticked. Yeah. So it's meant to give you an idea of what the the real job thing is. Mm. Not after you're from four. That's when you go to university. You don't even know the course that you're choosing. Mm. Right, and you said you want to be an engineer. What exactly type of engineer do you want? Mm. To so if you say an engineer, you tell us, okay, you want to be a structural engineer. We look for those structural mm. engineers. You want to be a software. We look for them. Mm. You spend a day with, I mean, a week with them, and then some of them say, "Apana," and a number of them have come back and said no. So the next shift, mm. we take them somewhere else. Yeah. By the time they're writing their O-level exams and making their application to uni, they have ticked what they don't want. They have seen. They know. They kn that's a very interesting. They know. You are you are supposed to answer a question though <laughs> about the parents that are how to choose. I answered that, mm. and the, I answered it indirectly because mm. when you're choosing a school, right, and you have a choice, then you're finished. Because if you have money and you have a choice, then you're finished, because you don't know where to go. If you don't have money and you have no choice, you'll go to the public schools. Mm. It's easy. Simple. Yeah. The moment you have money, you have choice. You remove them. And that's where the problem starts because yeah. the parents don't choose the school based on the, should I say, the traditional... But the, the question I was asking you, Mualimo, yeah. is, is, is this. It's very specific. Yeah. <clears throat> there are things that... because I be, for, so, so let me tell you what I believe. So probably then you will you'll understand my question properly. Yeah. There, if you go to if you go to Riara or International School, they will be having a piano for your kid. Mm -hmm. They will be having a uh, an electronic drum set. Mm -hmm. They will be having they will be having a good pitch where you can you know so so then you they what they do is that they look at the kid and and figure out the where where this kid is leaning towards. Mm -hmm. So I was thinking that if you are not able to afford these international schools, are you able to say okay let me let me try and on. Uh, uh, on Saturday, I take this child to Ligindogo mm -hmm. and see how they're performing with school. Mm -hmm. it, when a, a piano and a, a piano is is about forty thousand, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. I, am I able to buy this this girl a piano? Uh, can I buy them a drum? Can I do this and do mm -hmm. that and do that so that mm -hmm. even though my child is 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 in a public school, mm -hmm. they can have a taste of what what life is all about. And I can I can track this mm -hmm. child and see what is this what is this child good at. Mm -hmm. So what I'm trying to do is trying to to imitate, you know, mm -hmm. the Riaras and the Saint Marys and all these things. But I'm not sure whether 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 the way I'm thinking mm -hmm. is is going to solve this issue. Mm -hmm. You get mm -hmm. whether it is going to solve this issue of trying to get what is because if they're in a prime in a public school mm -hmm. in Sana Eight in Form One, they are not able you. Well, I don't know if they can be able to know what they are good at. Mm -hmm. They are not. They are not job shadowing. Mm -hmm. If if they are going to be yeah. in a city council mm -hmm. school, yeah. they are not going to be taken out to job shadow. Yeah. You know. So so how do you? Like my question is, how do you track your child and see what is good for your child, even though you cannot afford the you cannot afford the big I, schools yeah. out okay, there. Thank you. But that, that that is not the job of the parent. You know, kind of the job of the parent is to pay, mm. right? from our earlier conversation about the multiple intelligences, that's the job of the school. Mm. I'm the teacher. The I've, education system. Yes, I've called you, Jagero. Right? You're a parent. Your daughter's, I can see that your daughter is very talented in music and dance. That's a multiple intelligence. So can we enhance it? Right? If it's a private school, we'll have those programs in the school. So it's naturally embedded. Right? If your child is uh, talented in sports, or dance, kind of aesthetic movement and all that, mm -hmm. or singing, you know, good. I, I have identified that. That's my job as a teacher, you know, kind of, right? You'll have those guys who like, uh, all those things, zero. But the guy will sit down and produce 
a poem, we produce stories and everything. So this kid's intelligence is in writing. So can we take them in the direction of books and book fairs and you know ensure that you know so it's a school to do that. You as a parent for me to tell you is that listen, where Ebu Chota. <laughs> this is this is the direction that you, you but if it's a public school then it becomes difficult. Mm. Right. However, the the teacher training should take care of that in I, the identification aspect. It's not that when you're coming to see the teacher and then uh, like one parent told me uh man this guy got 45% in maths. I know, see I got the test papers back. <laughs> so why are you reading for me the marks? Mm. I know, tell me something different about this guy. He's like this guy got 45%. He's reckless, he's uh, suffering from I will call it temporary loss of whatever he does not remember the formulas mm-hmm. you know kind of word problems he's struggling with. give me the specifics okay but also on top of that you know this guy has got a great voice you know kind of have you thought mm-hmm. of mm-hmm. have you thought of this guy trying a commercial and whatever mm-hmm. kind of mm-hmm. thing other than just academics what else is this guy made of what mm-hmm. else is this guy bringing mm-hmm. Apa. great yes mm. I think we are we we have we have we have talked about a lot. Yes. The 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 the, the watch is reading one hour six oh, minutes. Really? <laughs> yeah, and my my producer has told me twice to stop the conversation. Oh, oh. one hour. <laughs> yeah, it oh. usually goes very fast. So we are going to stop there for today. Yeah. I'm going to call you again so that we talk about CBC. Okay. You know. So uh, no I think. Problem. I think we, will, we will, we can we can we can we can uh, catch up and then you also have something that you're doing that I really mm. really love the street thing yes and yeah. I think we we should talk about it because no I think problem. our dreams are the same I'm starting something in the village mm. which is already going on mm. and you have got this street thing that you're doing yeah, yeah, yeah. So I think we the we are we are meeting at some crossroads. No problem. We basically talk yes, about it. thank uh, you very I, much. I remember that dream of yours of starting. Yes, uh, yes, yes. It is uh, <laughs> what was it? A study center? Or something? No, it's called the dream center where we are uh, we are we are setting the up dream, the, the dream center. Yeah, we are setting up the place to for kids to learn soft 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 skills. It's beautiful. And then right? and then connect to it's the to the global have job you, market. How far have you gone? I have I have gotten a place. Mm-hmm. We have done the the, the first quote. Already started. Yes, oh, wow. we have gotten the first quote, and so we are remaining with tiling, mm-hmm. and then uh, and then our our first course is starting in August. Already. Yes. So you you have the building. We have the building. Yes, somebody somebody gave us a building. Wow. We didn't build it, but uh, oh, the building was there. Yes, the building was there. My for my my uncle had built a f- huge four story building, uh, four 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 bedroom building for mm-hmm. the mother. Mm-hmm. Then the mother passed on. Oh. Before so he finished. So he handed it over to us to do to do a project to to honor the name of his mother. Oh, that's beautiful. Uh, you lucky guy, man. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a lucky guy. Yeah, so lucky thank guy. you guys so much for tuning into this episode with the DJ Malimo. Mm, yes. Uh please subscribe, hit the notification bell and you know, ciao until next time. <laughs>